All right, man, peace. So as you guys know, Andre Ward, he was victorious last night. Very impressive in his performance. A lot of people are complaining about alleged low blows. Uh, to me, when you're constantly getting your head pulled down and putting a headlock, you're going to receive certain low blows. It is what it is. All right. To me, the low blows were not as stark as they would have needed to be for people to uh, complain about. If you want to see real low blows, go watch Miguel Cotto fight against Zab Judah back in 2006. All right. You want to see a low blow? Go look at Zab Judah fight Floyd Mayweather in 2006. Oh, pardon me. I believe Zab fought Cotto in 2007 because Floyd fought Zab in 2006. Yeah. So if you want to see real low blows, watch that. A real low blow is when you come up with the hook up into the cup. All right. It's not when you come up with a hook at the belt line or in the area, in your abdominal area, right above, right above your, you know, your genitals. Like, I don't believe that. I do not believe that, um, that Sergey got hit in the, in the genitals. I don't believe that. Just looking at the, at the punches that landed, I believe that he got hit right on the belt line and his belt line was high. But let's see what goes on here. My occasion is this. How about this headline? Leaving no doubt. That's what Andre Ward did last night in Vegas against Sergey Kovalev. Andre killing me with that high top. Ward undefeated. It's a rematch from November where Ward won a controversial decision. Copeland started off strong, landing a lot of blows, threw a lot more punches, but Ward would retaliate. he connect with the left hook. Connecting was the key for Ward. Copeland tried to keep his distance, but Ward would land a huge punch, and Copeland... Yeah, oh man. God damn, he had... <laughs> Sergey was dancing like Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> My fuck I hit with a right hand, so I said, don't be cruel. <laughs> be left a little shaken up. He <laughs> I'm all shook up. Uh -huh. Complained, by the way, did Kovalev, that Ward hit him with two low blows in the final exchange. Officials watched. He didn't hit him with two low blows. He went to the body. He attacked the body. Sergey was done. You know, Andre Ward, he's not the most talented dude, but his intensity level is um, is up there with anybody I've ever seen fight. All right. He's not the most talented dude. He's not he's not Floyd. He's not Sugar Ray Leonard. He's not Ray Robinson. He's not Ali. He's not Roy Jones. He's not those guys. But his intensity level, he's similar to a Bernard Hopkins. He's going to do what he has to do to win. And um, do I believe he purposefully went low on Sergey? No. I believe that he went along the belt line. Um, and he punished he punished Sergey to the body. Those body shots were crazy. Watch the replay and rule the punch was legal. Ward wins in the eighth round by TKO. So now he's still running around talking about um move, moving up to cruiserweight. That brother didn't need to stay at at, at uh, light heavy. He doesn't have the talent to move up to cruiserweight. So before Sergey Kovalev ran into Andre Ward, he'd never lost. He was 30-0-1 in his pro career until these two met last November, and Ward came away, as I mentioned, with that controversial decision. Now Kovalev suffers his second straight defeat. Both losses coming at the hands of Andre Ward. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you fight elite fighters. Sergey is a great fighter. Uh, he's a good boxer. But he doesn't know how to change levels. And he fights with anger. And when you fight with anger, whenever you fight an elite boxer, an elite boxer is not worried about how angry you are. And that's why guys like Mike Tyson and... Sonny Liston and Jake LaMotta and uh, uh, what's my man's name? Roberto Duran. Even though they're great fighters, they've had their anger used against them, against fighters who are elite boxers and extremely intelligent. That's what you do. You want to make a guy extremely upset to make them make mistakes. All right. All right, y'all. So now I want to show you guys the moment in the fight where I knew that Andre Ward was going to beat Kovalev and it was when they came together in the center of the ring with the referee I want you to pay very close attention to Kovalev's stomach I want you to pay very close attention as uh, him and Ward are looking at each other pay attention to how his stomach is going in and out
Okay, gentlemen, you both received your address, instructions in your address room. Okay. Right here is good. Anything that's low. Right here is good. Anything that's low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. They don't touch. Right. Did you see how Kovalev's stomach was going in and out? Why is that? Because he was breathing hard. Because he had so much anxiety. He was so angry. Right? He tried to use his anger against Andre Ward. And you can't do that. That's why he got tired. Everybody's like, why did he get tired so quick? You know why he got so tired so quick? Was because of his anxiety. He couldn't deal with the level of stress that he felt because he wanted to hurt Ward so bad. He hated him so much. All right? When I saw his stomach going in and out like that, when they came together, I said, this guy's going to lose because he's going to be done by round four. He's going to be so tired by round four that eventually he's going to lose. I didn't think he's going to get stopped. But um, when I saw that, I said, OK, he's going to lose this fight. All right. So now here's the post fight interview with both Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev. Let's see. Let's see uh, how they view the fight and their take or their interpretation of how the fight went. One of the more shocking conclusions to a major championship fight that I can remember seeing, Andre. How did you do it? First and foremost, I want to give honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's truly been the focal point of my whole career, my whole life. I've never been the most talented. I've never been the biggest. But we seem to keep knocking down Giants one, one, one by one. And I'm thankful. Yeah, I agree. Uh, like I've said, you're not the most talented. But, you know, the brother keeps winning. So, obviously, the Most High has, uh, has gifted him in certain ways. There's no doubt about that. So, how did you do it? <laughs> I, I knew that uh, today, this, this fight was going to be different. Uh, we had a, a good camp last time. We had some physical issues. Uh, Kovalev fought a good fight. But once I compute a fighter in my brain and, and have him in there, I know what I need to do the next time around. Virgil Hunter, your trainer, was yelling at us ringside. That's what happens to bullies. But I thought Kovalev showed in the first fight that he was much more than just a bully. To do that to someone who's not a bully is even harder. Well, you have bullies that are skillful. Kovalev is skillful, but he is a bully. And you could tell by how he acted uh, prior to the fight. When he, Like I said, when he met at the center ring uh, with Andre by the referee... The way he was breathing all hard, you could tell he was totally fueled by anger. And most bullies are totally fueled by anger. And a, uh, an extremely smart and intelligent fighter will try to take advantage of what galvanizes his opponent, whether it be anger or whatever it is. You want to know how to turn your opponent's strength into his, into his weakness. And that's what Andre did very well. So Kovalev is a bully. If, what was the case here? I mean, the first time around, just as a whole, the, the man is a, is a world champion. He's defending his belts I don't know how many times. He's been on top for a long time. I don't take away from my opponents when I fight the best. I give him their credit so I can raise my game. He's a great fighter. And there's not a lot of people that are going to beat him. But That was his way of saying, he said, I gave him credit. I give him his credit. The reason why he's saying that is because when he beat Kovalev, Kovalev didn't give him his credit. Facing great fighters, you got to raise your game to the next level. And I'm thankful we did that tonight. We thought watching ringside, I thought, Andre is having his way, and yet he may be down on the cards because even as he's pushing Kovalev back and landing shots and discouraging him, Kovalev's still moving his hands and landing those shots, and, he's, and, and he has a reputation as a big puncher and maybe winning these rounds. What and that's true. Like, like I was saying, uh, Ward's head movement and body movement is not as good at this weight. It's just not. He's lost a lot of speed and reflexes moving up to 175, also due to his age, also due to the fact that he's a clean fighter. All right. He's not on any any performance enhancing drugs. So you can see the difference. All right. When a guy gets near 35 and he's not on anything, you are going to see a you are going to see a, a little letdown here and there in regards to reflexes and speed. Of the way the fight was going at the time you stopped him, um, I felt like I was up. I don't know about how many, but again, you know, the fight, a championship fight, really starts in the second half of six, the sixth round. I could tell he was getting a little tired, but he was still in there. He was still fighting. And then when I saw him reacting to body shots that were, you know, borderline, I knew I had him, and I had to just keep going down. And then I heard him with a head shot, and I just had to get the right shots in there to get it over with. And we did that. No doubt about it. Uh, through six rounds, I had Ward up four two. 
Seventh round, he punished him. Eighth round, he finished him off. Uh, you could tell that um, Kovalev was not the same fighter as he was in the first fight. Due to the fact, like Ward said, he computed him. When you have boxing geniuses like that, you give him another look. If you cannot knock them out, they are going to embarrass you. Andre, that was... You are not known as a finisher, but you, when you hurt him, you certainly know, knew how to follow up. And here is the end. Tell me what you see. I knew he was hurt. He was trying to cover up his body, so I'm trying to decide, okay, is it body hair, body hair? I got to take something to give some. So I just wanted to have a... a that's, what, that's what started him on his way right there, the right hand. That's the right hand that had him um, shaking, his, shaking his hips like Elvis. And uh, he was dazed, and I just had to get the right shots in there. I knew I had about 30 seconds to go. And I was just trying to finish it, man. And, get and it here's the end. Again, I knew it was close. I went right back to the body. I was probably borderline. But he was hurt, went right back there again. And he wasn't reacting, went right back there again. And he just, he didn't react, and the referee stopped him. You just authored. Of course he didn't react, brother. You paralyzed him with a damn body shot. Well, how the hell was he going to react? You hit the man right above his right above his rod. And like I said, it's right above his rod. People talking about he, he hit him with a low blow. The low the blow was not low. He had his belt line was high and he hit him right on the borderline. All right? I mean, if that shot hit Kovalev in his genitals, then I feel sorry for Kovalev's wife. The kind of performance that will be taught in gyms for decades to come. When you get a guy hurt in the body, go back down there. Go back down there. Don't, why, why get away from it? But let me ask you a question. Can I get on the pound for pound list now at the top? Is it possible? I don't think it'll be possible to keep you out of the number one pound for pound ranking because you didn't do that against just anyone. In the first fight, you overcame long odds falling way behind to eke it out. And in the rematch, you stopped the fearsome Sergey Kovalev. I think you are the best pound for pound fighter in the world tonight. Is that important? What kind of bullshit is that? I think you're the best pound for pound fighter in the world tonight. So what you trying to say? Tomorrow you're going to have somebody else? Just say you have him as a number one pound for pound fighter. Yes, it is. Uh, but it, I don't have a vote. And I keep saying that. So I got to keep my head down and keep working. And hopefully, against a great fighter like Sergey Kovalev, we'll get our credit tonight. And hopefully, uh, we'll get a top that pound for pound list. And one more real quick. I just want to thank my wife who doesn't get a lot of attention or a lot of shine. I could not do this over the last decade without her. She's a wonderful mother, wonderful wife. Thank you, baby. I love you. And she deserves a lot of credit. I saw an interview with her where they were trying to crowd around her and they were asking her about Kovalev and the things that Kovalev has said. And she says, I really don't know because I'm not on the Internet. That's one of the most impressive things that I've heard a female say in a long time. All right. For a lot of these uh, <laughs> for a lot of these uh, women out there who try to act all righteous, uh, a real righteous woman is not all up on social media and on the Internet all the goddamn time. All right. Andre, you were hesitant to say it before the fight. I thought clearly this is the best professional opponent you've ever fought, the biggest fight of your life. Are you now ready to say that this is the best guy you fought as a pro? Is this the biggest win of your career? What you think? You think so? I think so. I might agree with you. He's a good fighter, man. I get nothing but respect for him. Thanks, champ. Any, before I let you go real quick, I'm going to talk to Kovalev in a second. I know you just had the biggest win of your career. Do you have any thoughts about the near future? Maybe cruiserweight, I don't know. You want another belt? Maybe cruiserweight, I don't know. Cruiserweight. Well, you better, you better get matched right, bro, because you don't have that type of transcendent ability to move up to that weight. But, I mean, we'll see. I could, I, and just looking at Andre Ward's emblem... I can tell that it was uh, designed by somebody who's quote unquote in the know. You see, it's it's supposed to represent an AW, but it looks like it's uh, three pyramids: one that's upright, and two that is ups that are upside down, and then the five pointed star in the middle of the A, five pointed star for the mother goddess. I'm not saying that he had anything to do with the design of that emblem, but uh, remember that he is a subsidiary of uh, Brand Jordan. And Michael Jordan is definitely a 33rd degree Mason. So whoever designed the emblem for Kovalev, I mean, pardon me, for Andre Ward, uh, they mix some they, they mix some imagery in there on his on his uh, his logo. Heavyweight, that's always been a dream of mine. It's got to be against the right guy. But hey, man, I dream big and, and anything is possible when you got God in your life. Heavyweight, but not Anthony Joshua heavyweight, right? There's a limit to everything. Anything is possible, man. Thank you.
you, champ. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, baby. Thank you. Sergey, can you tell me what happened in there? He he whooped my ass, Max. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. He uh he I mean he he hit me and I don't know. Max like I, I can't believe like I feel good like uh, just uh, like just uh, I, 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 I don't know like I cannot explain this like did what In other words he's trying to say that the referee had a bad stoppage? I mean you feel good. What really are you saying? You were getting hit in the stomach and you wasn't moving, you were not responding. I mean, what, what are you trying to say? That you, you, you hit the man in his knuckles with your nutsack? What are you trying to say? Did you feel you were winning the fight at the time he stopped you? Uh, yes, not every round, but I feel that I, I, I kept going. I kept, kept good, good, good the fight, like a good the fight. Did you feel that it was a, the same guy you fought in the first fight, or did you feel he had improved, like you were facing a bigger challenge in this fight? You know, me, it was better. You were better. Both of we, we together uh, was better, but I didn't, I didn't feel like a knock, uh, knock down like any any punches, you know, like stop illegal. So, were you? You're saying you were never really hurt to the body until the final round? Uh, yeah, only on, only a low blow. Okay. Oh man, please. How fuck are you gonna say you was only hurt with the low blow? The man hit you with a right hand that had you dancing like Elvis. Come on, man. Motherfucker was like, return the sender. <laughs> Here's the end. Tell us what you see. Low blow. Huh? And I fell to this punch. That was right on the belt line. That was right on the belt line. That punch was on the belt line. That wasn't low. Again, another one. What? So you felt he, you felt no. You felt he, he, you looked hurt from a right hand to the head about 30 seconds before that. Did you feel his power on that punch? He was hit so hard. He don't remember getting hit by that right hand to the head, Mac. That's the problem. He's like, what right, oh, what right hand you're talking about? What a right hand? I don't remember. I hit him in the knuckles with my head. Uh, you know, it did, did, didn't hurt like that. Uh, I, I, I could, I could go down the floor, but like it was a low blow. It was a low blow. It was below the belt, but it looked borderline to me. Did it? Did it? Was it all the way low, or was it a borderline low? Uh, like one, one shot on a low, uh, on a like on the uh, on the border, on the border, and the second one on the low blow. You know? Are you saying? I stop the fight, like. So you're saying you could have continued? Yeah, sure, of course. And now, right now, I should continue. You don't feel like it was a proper stop? It didn't hurt. I, I was. Uh, I didn't feel the hurt. It looked ringside as though he hurt you. It looked to me as though you got hurt with the right hand up top, and then he started hurting you with hooks to the body. That may be what many people feel. Do you feel that it's enough to get a, 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 another fight with Andre Ward? Look, if Sergey wanted the fight to continue, uh, he should have showed some signs that he was ready to keep going. He didn't show any signs that he was ready to keep going. The dude looked like he was ready to quit. And a lot of times fighters that want to quit, they just won't fight back. They'll wait for the ref to stop it and then they'll act like they didn't want the fight to be stopped. Max, this, this, this is fight, you know, this is fight, it's like we are boxers. We're not the girls, like, yes, he, he punched me, but I didn't hurt, you know, he didn't hurt me. And I he said, we're not like girls. We don't. <laughs> Yo, them people from across seas, they don't give a shit. He said, we're boxers. We're not like girls. We don't. Look, we're not here for bullshit, Max. You keep asking questions. I go to knock you out next. I, I, I feel continue to fight, you know. like It's like, I don't, I don't know why stop the fight. Like It's, it's crazy. I want to get, uh, again, uh, fight with him and kick his ass. How many rematches you want, man? <laughs> like, come on. What you gonna you gonna go to his house and ask for another rematch? I mean shit, you gonna fight him in the front yard? If you can't get an immediate rematch, <laughs> is it your intention to fight in order to get one? In other words, is this now something that will be the focus of your career to get Andre Ward in the ring again eventually? Uh, no, I wanna like get the rematch.
much uh, at once. Uh, how possible, sir? Thank you, Sergey, for an excellent fight once again. I didn't agree with the, with the stop judges, the stop uh, decision. Jim? Well? Man, forget Jim. Look, ain't no way in the hell that, um, that he really wants a rematch, but he is going to retire soon. All right? Sergey Kovalev is, a, is in a long line of, of sluggers who are used to just beating guys down, and when they get beat, they get so traumatized. He's going to fight maybe three, four more times, and he's going to retire. All right? Bottom line, bet money on it. That man going to retire. All right? Just like George Foreman did when Ali whooped his ass, the man, the man retired. He couldn't take it anymore. But anyway, peace.